But again, I didn't put the word addiction there. Mm -hmm. And that ain't all it says. It says a poor white, it says poor white southerner, or he who cracks the whip. That's in the dictionary. Mm. Pa, that's what it means, crack. What that's about, why we use that particular Final word. question about violence. Matt believes that at some point there will be a race war. Okay, thank fine. you so much, sir. Fine, fine. That, that you. Matt believes that, that at some point things will end with, with a race war. And so in many ways he advocates or he's open to the idea of violence. What about you? He talking to you. I'm, 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 you said you speak it for him. Yeah. Is that true? Well, what I would say is that uh, unfortunately if we get to a racial conflict, that inevitably violence is part of the human condition. And if that is inevitable, then people should prepare themselves themselves physically, spiritually, and materially. But we can avoid that conflict. You know, it's like you prepare for a hurricane if you live on the coast, but you have an evacuation plan. You have to have a plan God, neither, for but you, but you get a sense, right? He advocates violence. What about you? He advocates violence? I, I, I'm not advocating violence. So what you I, what, about? what, you do. what I would say do. is, <laughs> I think it, it, it might be a potential inevitability, but again, Conversations between if, white if, advocates and black you, advocates. If you're talking about a race war, you're talking. Look, about but I want to avoid that, and I, and, and that do, and that's the key point. Do you believe in violence? Do I believe in violence? Yes. How do you, do you believe in violence? killing? No, sir. You don't. Do you eat meat? Uh, yes, sir. Then you believe in killing, because somebody had to kill that I damn see. bird before you ate it, right? I see. <laughs> all right, then stop playing, man. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, says there was a time Who, what, to what all makes you think I'm things. Playing? There what, was a what time. Are, what makes you think to I'm all on? things because you're acting as if you don't even know the real the reality of what's going what's on. What's the reality of what's going on? The reality is, like I said before, there are twelve laws of come. You reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. Period. And also again, that's, that's, one? The, okay, that's, that's the, the third chapter, it says very plainly, there's a there's a time to love and there's a time to hate. You, you can't change this. And let me ask you this question. Since you're talking about violence and killing all, ain't you going to be in Syria if there's a bomb drop over? Are you not going to be able to report in the story? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Are you going to say Obama is a, is a monster? Are you going to ask Obama, why do you believe in violence, sir? Are you going to ask him that question? I've interviewed the President of the United States. And what did he say? Did you ask him about violence? Did you ask him why does he believe in violence? Why do you believe in killing, sir? Who gave you the right to do this? Did you ask him that? Mm. Mm. Did you ask him? I don't think I did. OK, then. Thank you. Ask him. So can I I'm not ask, ask you? Him. Can can I not ask him. Can I ask you? I'm asking. I'm talking to you. You right ask now. me. I don't. I don't control who goes places and drops bombs. I don't control that. Mm -hmm. European minds do. Mm -hmm. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I took the order to go. When I didn't know who I was. Now I know, and I know better. I'm not. I would never do it again. So do you think you and Matt could be friends? No. I don't think we can be friends. Because a friend is a very deep word. He said it himself. We can't be friends. Do you consider yourself? We can respect each other's position. Do you consider yourself that a racist? Do. do you consider yourself a racist? No, I don't, because racist is, comes from the word racism. Ism is a system of race where one race controls at least another race or several others. I am I have no when I say on my show I ain't gonna stop no white man from getting a loan to get a damn car or house. But when they say something in reference to black folks, it can shut us down from getting any damn thing. So no, I am not a racist. I am a product of racism. I'm not gonna kill nobody. <laughs> What's next for you guys? Um, well, I mean, I'd like to continue finding ways to be able to work with the black nationalist community because I think it's a natural way to avoid conflict and a way to be able to advance the interests of both of our respective peoples. So I want to continue this dialogue. I think this is a first step and we can just keep working from there for the best interests of whites and blacks in this country. Do you think you guys would talk again? It's possible. I don't understand. Was it productive? Excuse me? Was it productive? Well, do you think it was productive? Huh? Do you think it was productive? We'll see. I got to see what you are doing. One of, the, one of the guys had asked me, uh, why was I directing most of my questions at you? And part of it was because this is the only access I'll have to talk to you, right? Because a lot of these same questions I've asked of Matt already in other settings. Okay. So I don't want you to feel like I was going harder at you than I was at him. But I was directing my questions at you because this is my one opportunity to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to portray this? I mean, as a, as a journalist, my job is to tell the truth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean just to, uh, so what is the truth since you got, what is the truth? What is your truth about me? Uh, let's see, that you're, that you're, let's see. The truth that I know about you is that your name uh, is, your last name is Davis. Your first name is, what is your first name? Um, his first name is, um, mm. hold on, no, I have it right here. I remembered your name at the beginning. It's, no, 
Six feet tall, that you have a goatee. There are a variety of things I can say about you. But what you, you remember, you remember that part, though, that I'm a musician. No, I, it's in my notes. I'm a father. No, oh, I didn't know that. I'm a welder by trade. You're a chef. I'm an artist. You're a chef? Yes, yeah, chef. Too. Sure. Yeah. And you know what? I've been doing shows for years, walking in, in and out of these studios with Europeans. Europeans take the show, mm -hmm. Europeans play the show, Europeans conversate with me after and before the show, during the show as well. Like, you're Europeans in here now. I don't see anybody running from me. Right? Sure. Right. And so I'm a man on Matt. public access, given the opportunity to say what I say. If they did not like what I say, they could have shut me down a long time. Sure. Is that right? Sure. We have the right to speak, do we not? Absolutely. Okay. So, Freedom of speech. Have I done anything wrong with what I say? I'm not hanging with Sure. So, you haven't done anything illegal, certainly. All right then, so, yeah. next. So, but to answer your question about, are we gonna portray you truthfully? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. That we will, we will give context to this moment. We're doing a story about, the show is about hidden hate in America. The story is primarily about Matt Heimbach, this 22 year old kid from Maryland, how he sees the world. We've talked to people uh, who could be portrayed as sort of the opposite side of him, but who have similar views. That you're, as, as best I can tell, you're on the opposite side of Matt, and, but you share some common views. Mm -hmm. So you say that's that, accurate. You, okay, I'm listening to the word hidden hate. Mm -hmm. That's what you're portraying. Matthew mm -hmm. to be a person of, who has hidden mm -hmm. hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you're portraying me to be one who has hidden hate too. Is that how you're going to portray me to the world? No. The person who has hidden hate? No. Mm -hmm. but, you're, but you're certainly someone who has strong feelings about race. You're certainly someone who's used uh, strong language about race. Mm -hmm. That's about all you can say, strong language and strong views. So that, and and that, that means what? I don't get it. That just means what it means. Is that a problem? I didn't say it was a problem. I'm asking you. I don't know. But I don't think so. You know, I'm a passionate person about what I believe in. And that's really do, who do I you am. Find, do you find it, is there anything dangerous though about, about the, the voice that you have as the voice that Matt has? Like, well, like, when you use language oh. like crack, that you just keep on talking about that, don't you? What's the word that you Okay, I'll tell you what. I did a show called The Nigga Must Die. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I did that before I did a show called The Cracker Must Die. But there are I know the titles of my show. by both. Those and words. why don't you bring that one up though? Okay, you That was the first show I did. The first one out of the two. Mm -hmm. The nigga must die first. That's what I said first. And I described what the nigga was to me. See, I have no problem with these terms, nigga, cracker. It doesn't bother me. I've surpassed that. You can call me nigga all day and it don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Because I know who the naga was, the naga people, who are so called gods in blackface, if you want to put it that way, and in, 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 my, in my form. Mm -hmm. So those words don't bother me. They may bother some people. But then, you know, I mean, uh, I see words that is used by mainstream media like yourself to disguise uh, the things that, in which you feel about black people mm -hmm. as well. Urban this, urban that. Uh, we know some of the terms that you all use. It, it, and it's provocative in a different type of way. Mm -hmm. So you all provoke things in a different way. I'm just going to be frank with it Please. and upfront and truthful about it. I'm not going to cut corners. I'm not deceived, trying to deceive anyone. I want you to know how I feel. Period. Is some of that hate, you think? Is hate too strong of a word? Uh, 
Hey, let me say this. I'll answer that like this. You know, I hate when it's too damn cold outside. I hate when it's too damn hot. I hate certain colors on me. Just don't look right. Yeah. Uh, I hate, hate to go certain places. You hate white I hate to go certain places. Uh, I hate the atrocities that have happened to us at the hands of Europeans. Yes, I do. I hate it. And I have no problem with saying that. I'm not going to shy away from that. And the Bible backs me up. There is a time to hate. That's what it says. If, they, if, if, if hate wasn't prevalent in this country, uh, I don't think that our black men would have had their testicles cut off and penises cut off and ears and fingers cut off and use a souvenir. I don't think love produced that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think also that there is a response that comes from those type of atrocities. And I'm not going to be some sissified black male who is afraid of the media. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. I have something that I'm going to leave on this planet for my children. And if the only thing I can leave for them is strength in their father, mm. as I try to do something proper on this planet, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not one of those who are going to step it and fetch it and run and buck and dance. And I'm not kissing no beer, no rear ends at all. Period. Do you hate? Do you hate any group of people in this country? Do you hate? Do you hate certain black people? Do you hate white people? Again, there was a time to hate. There was a time to love. It won't be that time to hate. There's some think. things I hate that I do. Mm. Hate is necessary. Hate is proper. It's not, see, y'all want to make this, it's for the word, the, uh, like, uh, the problem in this whole country. If we want to talk about hate, let's talk about the hate that produced people like myself to speak. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the hate that produced Ida B. Well to speak what she spoke. Let's talk about the hate that caused Sojourner Truth to speak about the truth that she spoke about. Let's talk about the hate that caused our great mother, Harriet Tubman, to orchestrate the, uh, the Underground Railroad. Let's talk about the hate that produced that. Can we talk about that for a second? Because it sure wasn't love that caused those people to do what they did. Do you think so? Mm. Do you think it was, uh, no, mm, no, no, mm, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think that it was love that caused our people to run away from the atrocities on slave plantations? <clears throat> do you think so? You're shaking your head. I'm asking you a question. Do you think I'm so? I'm listening to you, my brother. I, it's, it's a philosophical question. I mean, one can make the argument. We talk about Harriet Tubman to the world. So we can was hear it, yes or no. Was it hate? I've asked you several questions. You've not given me a yes or no, and I've not qualified that or questioned that, but you gave me the answer. I gave you me. plenty of yes or no basic answers. I don't, I don't, I told recall, you. I don't recall any of those, any okay. yes or no questions. Well, if, but you answer, listen, if you but listen, if you listen carefully, you get an answer. I'm a good listener. I've okay. been a journalist for 32 years. I'm a very good listener. Right. But, but again, you, like you raised the question about, are, are, are about you, love are you saying Harriet are Tubman you, are is someone, saying, did she do it out of, out of hate of slavery or out of a love for freedom for her people? That is, that is an interesting question. Yes, I would like an answer for that. Don't know? Because I, I, I'm falling in line with my great ancestors. That's all I want to do anyway. If I can get close, just this close, to the greatness of a Marcus Mosiah Garvey, then I'm doing okay. If I can get just, if I can scratch a pull the, the coattail of a, of, a, of a Marcus Garvey, I'm doing all right. I think so. Hmm. Now, if I can pull the coattail of Dr. King. See, this is the thing. We, okay, now this, this, this is the thing right here. This is the thing Martin right Luther here. Martin Luther King's Let name, me. and you're someone who uses some of the language that you've used. Let you me talked finish. about some yeah, of the yeah, things you've you, talked about. You. Yes, yes, let's talk about Dr. King. Now, that's a Dr. King that the media portrays. But the Dr. King that decided to get the guns before they sent Baynard Rustin in to stop him from doing so, that Dr. King is not portrayed in the books, in the media. What are you talking about? What do you mean, what am I talking about? The Dr. King that was ready to actually fight because he was actually tired of what was going on, there was a man named Bernard Rustin that came in to stop him from doing so, sent by the government. in my way. To stop him. Dr. King got tired of that. Dr. King was getting ready to uh, join forces with, he was getting ready to join forces with Elijah Muhammad. They didn't want that to happen. Now, even in a nonviolent stance, he was killed by a white man. He was trying to be nonviolent, and a uh -huh. white man killed. Did he kill him because he loved him? Or did he kill him because he hated him? So you're saying that Martin Luther know, King advocated violence? Don't know. Never interviewed the man. You, you why, why do you think he killed? You think love? Why do you think he killed? To pull guns out and shoot folks? Are why do you, you think he killed? That? Why do you think he killed? Because he hated him. Hmm. 
That's why I think. I mean, I'm pretty sure even white folks think that. Mm -hmm. Damn, <laughs> that ain't rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but, this, then but, again, this, but this notion that Martin Luther King ever in his life embraced violence goes against history. Doesn't matter. My point is, I wasn't finished. My point is this: Dr. King was nonviolent. Right. Could you just stand a little closer to him sure, so sure. we can use okay. the shop? Okay. And, and, and he okay. was killed. Then you have Malcolm X, who was by any means necessary. He was killed too in this society. But it history does, shows it really that he moved away matter. from violence. Who? Malcolm X moved away from violence. He, and he was still killed. That's my, my point is this. It doesn't matter where a black man or indigenous man like myself decides to, whatever, whatever we decide to, to deal with, we want to deal with violence or nonviolence. It doesn't matter. We can't be free in this country, period. No matter you what stance that we no. You don't think you're free. No, I do not think that. We, on we as a people are not free yet. How is it that you're not free? Well, you have well, okay, well, okay. The, the the blacks laws and these things of slavery that have been put in place, it seems to me that they're rising up again. Now when Obama became the president, all over college campuses they start hanging nooses. Did you know that? Did okay. you know that? All over college campuses? A, a lot of college campuses. I see. Yeah, they were, they were nooses, huh? Mm -hmm. Because when he was, do you know that? Sure. Okay. Okay. Do you think that that happened because the people love